Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and I wanted to continue this morning on our green woodworking series. And yesterday we talked about this lap joint that we put a pin through where we cut a couple rabbits on the end of a joint, lapped it over, bored a hole through it with our auger and put a pin in it that we drove through a tine maker. Now we can improve on the strength of this joint and make it more multifunctional if we create what's called a bridle joint. And a bridle joint is simply a double cutout with a single tenon through that mortise cutout. To be able to affect those in easy fashion, we're going to need to add something to our basic woodworking toolkit, and that is a mortising chisel. And mortising chisels come in lots and lots of sizes, all the way up to large timber framing style mortising chisels. So, depending on the work you're going to do, again, is going to dictate what size tool you add to your kit. This small mortising chisel came from a second hand used tool store in Seattle, Washington called Hardwick Swap Shop. And I think I only paid about 12 or 15 bucks for this one. Mortising chisels are pretty expensive. You're better off trying to find one used somewhere or at a sale than trying to buy one new. A brand new mortising chisel, that's the size you would use for a timber framing project, can cost up to $200. But something like this you can find relatively cheap. You could probably even make a mortising chisel on your forge if you do any rudimentary blacksmithing or utility blacksmithing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a bridle joint which is going to lend itself very well to allowing us also to make a hinge. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to make a bridle joint on the end of a piece of lumber. And then we're going to turn that bridle joint into a hinge so that we can swing. And you can put that hinge on any scale, depending on what you're trying to build, to hold doors or windows or sashes or even to be able to put lids on boxes and things like that, depending on how you build that hinge. But this will give you the basic knowledge of how to make that hinge with a bridle joint. Stay with me. Okay, to make our bridle joint, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the end grain of two of these pieces of wood. One of them We'll have one piece left in the center with the other two as our waist, and the other one will be just the opposite. It will have the two pieces on the end, and the center will be waist, and that's where the mortising chisel comes in to cut that center piece out from back here. Again, you could probably make this. Could you make do with something in the woods, like a screwdriver or something like that, if you absolutely had to? You sure could. But what you want to do is you want to cut the end grain of this wood and cutting through end grain can be difficult that's why chisels are the best tool for that job so what we're going to do is we're just going to vice this thing up and cut this out we'll figure out how deep we want that cut to be we want it to be the same depth as our mating piece so we'll mark that on here as well for a depth stop so we know how deep to cut Now we could use any saw that we have for this, but the finer tooth saw that we have, the better off we're going to be. We can use our normal buck saw for this, or we could use our small takedown saw that we made here, and it will give us a much finer cut that we can control much better. keep that as straight as possible going down through the wood. The advantage of a saw like this is if we start to get off a little bit we can turn the saw and get it back on track. And you can do that with your bow saw as well but your bow saw is going to be much harder to turn and get back on track because the blade is going to be a lot wider than this saw is. Now, on one of these, we want to come around here and go ahead and cut both of these side pieces off. And we can do that with our saw, or we can shear it off there with our knife. Either one we choose to do, it doesn't really matter. They'll both work. Now once we have the tenon side cut, we can come back in there with our knife and trim things up, make sure everything's evened up. 
none of this is anything that you can't do in the woods very easily so we'll just come in here with some shear cuts get that evened up come down here even this tenon up really good okay now we need to cut our mortise side and that's where our chisel comes in how wide your chisel is so if your chisel is too wide for this it's not going to work as well and you'll have to make that a little bit wider cut right there and we'll come in about halfway down from one side and then we'll come in from the other side now once you've got that mortise cut out for that tenon and this is a little bit wedged and I left it that way on purpose because when I drop it down inside here I'm going to use that wedge to my advantage to make that a good tight joint and that gives me a bridle joint I can put that anywhere along the length of this and if I drill through this now and drop a pin through here now I have an even stronger joint and if I trim this down into an arc and I put a pin in here I now have a pivoting or a hinging joint and that's what we're going to do next Now, once we've driven a pin through here, we have greatly increased the strength of this joint. And that gives us a really, really strong connection that's great for construction purposes that we can do in the bush or in the woods. We'll cut this off even to clean that up and make it look nice. But what we can do next to modify this even further is we can round this tenon off so that it will swing in that mortise to create a swing joint or a hinge joint and that's what we're going to do next okay so now we're going to take this hinge apart and if we want this thing to swing we're going to have to curve this portion of the joint like this and all I'm doing is coming up to that cut two line anyway that I already had and just rounding this over into a radius and I'll cut that off initially with my small saw because I'll be able to cope around that a little bit but I could just carve it off with my knife if I needed to and then we'll make adjustments from there to make sure that we have enough radius for this to be able to turn actually I will just cut this off with my knife just like this we're cutting across the end grain here you don't have to have a bunch of special tools you just got to have a few different tools than you might normally carry with you to do a lot of good woodcrafting and woodworking even in a woodland environment now once we once we have rounded this off pretty well we pound that back in and see how it lines up and then we can shove a pin back in there a test pin basically to see how it's going to line up Just run a pin right through there and then we can see where we're rubbing and you can see we're rubbing right there on that shoulder coming across so that means that needs to be trimmed down just a little bit more we might be able to do some of that with it in here, but we'd be better off taking it apart to do that. Yeah, we'll just take it apart. So now when we run this up, if we're touching right there, that means we need to put more of a bevel on here. Now it's not a big deal to do that. We just have to take it apart and change our bevel. 
to get that to swing better. Okay, once we've knocked that off, now we have a swinging joint. And we could use that in different scale for anything from a box to a door hinge, anything like that that we were building that we needed a hinge on, a cook set, anything like that could be hinged in this manner. And we would just drive that pin in as deep as we need to drive it and cut it off. And we would have a hinge there. Guys, I appreciate you joining me out here today for a look at the hinged bridle joint or swivel joint. It is a very good wood crafting joint that you can learn that you can use not only at home, but also in camp. It's very easy to make with simple tools. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. Thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. You watch them, Rufus. You watch them. <laughs>